Good morning, friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of God our Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So together now we give praise to our God in heaven. Glory to God, to God in, in the highest. highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sin that they may repent. For you love all things that are on both nothing you have made. For what you have hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it? Or be pers persevered had it not been called forth by you. But you spare all things because they are yours. But you spare all things because they are, your, O Lord, and lover of souls. For your imp impressionable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little. Warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, and they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you. O oh Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our Lord may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified to you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of our minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by the spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter alleged from us to the effect the day of our Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass by. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. And when they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. Oftentimes we refer to evangelization in our church. We know that John Paul II was really big on us going out to the people, welcoming Catholics back home again. We're probably all aware that the second largest denomination of Christians are fallen away Catholics. Okay? Those folks we should welcome home, but not only those, but maybe all those others who are on the fringe and don't belong any place. John Paul II said we need to evangelize. Pope Benedict came along and said the same thing. And now we hear Francis. As a matter of fact, Francis is finally being a little more direct even with us priests. He's saying to us, get out of your offices, get out from behind your desk, go out to where the people are, be with them. I find every once in a while when I'm, if I go to the grocery store and I'm buying groceries or I stop in 
to buy something someplace, how I will run into people. And if I'm wearing my collar particularly, they'll say something to me, oh, so where are you a priest or are you a priest or something of that order. And I'll say, well, what religion do you belong to? And they might say to me, well, I used to be Catholic. It's amazing in a moment of conversation, what can happen with just befriending somebody to enter into that kind of conversation? There's a guy at one of the hardware stores. I remember when I first came to town, I visited with him, and we were just chatting a little bit, and he was asking me, so where do you belong? Are you pastor someplace? What religion are you? And he says to me, I used to be Catholic. And I said, well, you know, once you're a Catholic, you're sort of always a Catholic. No matter what you do, where you go, we always consider you baptized a Catholic, and you're part of the family. So he said, you mean like I could even come back to church if I wanted to? I said, absolutely. It's still your church. You know what? It isn't just limited to the priest to be doing that. It's for all of us. One of the ladies from our parish who was homebound, she said, Father, last week uh, one of my uh, health home nurse caregivers was in visiting with me. I asked her what church she belonged to, and she said, well, I used to be Catholic. And she said, well, we just started talking about the church, and she said, you should go over there to St. So-and-so parish, and they really have a nice pastor over there. You might like it over there, and things have changed a lot in the church. And she said in the conversation, that lady, when she left, my health care nurse, caregiver that day, she said, oh, I might just take you up on that. I really do miss church. So it isn't just for the pastors. It isn't just for those who work in the parish parishes in our church. It is for all of us to take on that role, to invite others, to evangelize, and to welcome them home. Zacchaeus never would have come to know Jesus had Jesus not stopped, looked up on the tree and said, hey, come on down. I want to go to your house today. How much difference would that make for us to be able to do the same thing with others we meet? That is the challenge I believe is offered to us today. A new life for Zacchaeus because he was open. Now, some people aren't, but Zacchaeus was. I believe the man at the hardware store whom I talked to after visiting now four and five years, he is so friendly and always wants to talk about religion and about church and about Jesus. He still is on his way to discovering Jesus in his own life. And I believe most of the people in our world are looking for that connection, a spiritual connection that will bring them home to our God. So today, I'd invite us now to stand to remember to what we are called, to remember also the faith that brings us here as we pray together our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became him. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we turn now to our God, offering our prayers of the faithful. We pray first for creation, our environment, our natural resources, all that God gives us, that we might treat them with respect and realize the gift that this all is to us. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our politicians. We pray that they may be motivated out of building a society for the common good. 
that their care is always about what is best for others, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray today for all those who seek to return to Jesus, to return, return to the church, to return to their roots and to search out faith in the God who loves them and gave them life, we pray to the Lord. We pray for life, from conception to natural death, that we continue to uphold all that Jesus teaches us, all that comes from the scripture, all that our church challenges us to live in respecting and maintaining dignity for human life, we pray to the Lord. We pray for vocations to the religious life, to the priesthood, to all those who serve within the church and the very ministries within our parishes to continue to reach out to the needs of her people through evangelization. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We take a moment of quiet and then remember any personal prayers we might have. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, So, Lord God, open our minds and our hearts as we come before you this day. And through this Eucharist, which we are about to share, continue to keep us a people always faithful to you and your teachings. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, my friends, let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the place and glory of his name, for our good and for all of us. And may these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered far by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, so that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so now, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body 
and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So now as we turn to the Lord at the Savior's command, we are formed by his divine teaching, and we dare to say, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the, power, the power, and the glory are yours. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. If there's someone near us, we can share that sign of peace with each other. Peace, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. We 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my will. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We go in peace then to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. Our broadcast cannot continue without your support. Please consider sending a donation to TV Mass at Post Office Box 588, Winona, Minnesota 55987.